Hi, I'm Ashley Adamson, and um, today I'm not sure what we're talking about. I'll, you'll probably know what we're talking about because you, you'll see it in the title, but at the moment I don't know what I'm talking about. What I do know is it's like my last day. I'm flying back to Germany. I've been out here for a longer period than I expected. Basically came out here for um, you know, facial feminization surgery and breast surgery and um, that all happened in January. I've been healing, then I stayed a bit longer to get the COVID vaccine. And now I'm, and now I'm going back and uh, it just has me thinking a lot about what I came here for, transformation and that art of that and what I've kind of gotten out of it. And now there's this line here in my timeline where I can say, okay, now I'm returning. So what is, what does transformation mean? And what does it mean to me? And what have I learned about transformation by going through this physical transformation? So the first thing that surprised me about this process of going through surgery was that I expected a big change in my own thoughts, in my own experience of myself, where I said, you know what? Like, I must be a different person now. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna experience this whole new version of me. And when I look in the mirror, when I wake up and I see my breasts or I see my new face, uh, it's gonna be, wow, like, oh my God, this is incredible. Um, if, you, if you've had surgery or if you're thinking of having surgery, how do you expect yourself to react? How did you expect to react? And then what was that actual reaction for you? What was that actual moment? I've had two moments. For my breast surgery, seeing my boobs was a huge thing because suddenly I felt like I had solved this problem that seemed like it just wouldn't go away with my chest. And that was, that was really beautiful the first moment, but over a period of, of several weeks, it kind of was just like this experience of, I feel like I have a lump on my chest and it's kind of getting in the way of things and I can't do a lot of things because of this. And did I get the right size? Is it too small? Is it too large? Um, how does it fit with my body? And uh, by going through all of these thinking processes, it's sort of like this, this coping Thing where you have sudden change and then your body and yourself have to grow accustomed to this new experience. And I feel like I've gotten to that point now where I say, okay, my breasts are a good size. Um, they look well with my body, but now I'm ready for the next thing. And uh, that's kind of like the surprise that I've had with my transformation is there was not a lot of internal change. There was not a lot of like, Oh my God, like I feel like a new woman now. Like I, I imagined it as a deeper thing than putting on your first dress. Do you know that moment where you put on your first gender affirming clothes and you feel like so fabulous and amazing, right? Like how, how did you react when that happened? Like how did it feel? Like where did you feel it in your body? It's like such a powerful experience. And so I thought, if I'm physically changing my body, it's gonna be like that plus more. And it really wasn't, it really wasn't. It was just like, oh, like I got some lumps on my chest and uh, yeah, what's next? <laughs> and maybe that's also just my own personality is I like to move fast and I like to go, okay, cool, that's done. Let's move on to the next thing. But I think there is this aspect of transformation, and maybe it's not just in surgery, maybe it's just in life and doing things, where as soon as you hit that tipping point, which I talk about in the previous video, once you hit that tipping point, it's just become natural and you become used to that and it's, it's now normalized. And then now you're looking to, okay, now that I'm on this new plateau, what do I do? from here, what is the thing that I go to next? And I've seen some trans women actually go down to this point where like the the surgery, like getting like a vaginal plasty was the end all be all of their transition. And they spent their whole like early part of their life saving up for it, thinking about it, planning it, getting getting to the actual surgery and then having it done. And that's, that's their 
prize. But then once you have the prize, what do you do after that? It's sort of like this crisis where all of your meaning has been gravitating around this one moment in your life and then it happens. And do you have a plan or do you have expectations or what are you gonna do next? Now, I don't know where you are in surgery or any transformational changes like HRT, but for me, the surgery was a big part of my transition, but it's not a big part of who I am. And I, that's an important distinction to make and probably super important to underline this for new trans folks. And I guess, you know, older trans folks, like people who have transitioned much longer than I have or as long, or maybe just, you know, for a year, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this too, which is like how much you tie your identity to your transition. Um, this is like such an important question to ask yourself is how much is your identity wrapped up in being trans? Because, because like being trans is just one aspect of, of who you are. And if you create this whole world and narrative about yourself that is all about being trans and there's nothing else to it, you can kind of be an incredibly one dimensional person that can only talk to other people who are interested in talking about you or trans related things. And I think those are great things to talk about, but I don't, I don't have friends that we just talk about our transition together. In fact, most of my friends are not trans partially because it's hard to find trans people. Second of all, it's hard to, be compatible with people. And when you combine those two things, there aren't a lot of those people around. But I see this happen often where people attach their identity so much to being trans and more specifically like being a trans Twitch streamer or being a trans OnlyFans model or being a trans activist. You know the types, you've seen these types of people, right? Maybe you are one of these people and that's totally fine. But like for me, like, I don't want to, and I guess this is the question for you, which is like, what are your values with your own identity and the value that you want to create and give back to the world? What, how do you want to align your identity with that? Because we all tell ourselves these stories, like what's your story about yourself? If I say like, who are you? Right? Like that's such a big question, but how do you define yourself? The way you define yourself dictates your reality because you tell the story of the reality that you hope for, um, but sometimes even what you're hoping for can be a hope for something that's not good for you. Like, I believe that I must always struggle. And then you hope, and you do this on a subconscious level to create struggle in your life so that way it's a self-perpetuating narrative and cycle that you live in. So you can continue to live the way that you see things and it's harder to conceptualize that maybe all of the hard struggles that you've had in your life, and I'm speaking towards this very specifically because this is something that's deeply embedded in my own personal narrative that I've been working through, is like allowing things to be easy. For me, when things are easy, it's like there's, whoa, like there's something wrong here. Have you ever kind of like made something harder for yourself? Or is there some other way that you self-perpetuate your own reality through the narrative that you tell yourself? Yeah, so we've gone off on a tangent. <laughs> I'm gonna pull it back a little bit, yeah. So we're gonna go back to transformation. The kind of to recap that one piece, I think the important part is to understand your narrative and the role that it plays in your identity and how that also plays out in your transformation. My surgery was a big moment. It was an emotional moment, but it does not define me. And so when I'm done with my surgery, I'm not like, oh no, like that's it. My whole life, like meaning has been satisfied. It's just like, okay, check that item off the list. I look better, I feel better about myself, and now I can go focus on other things. And one of those things is uh, hip surgery that I've been thinking about. So I've now kind of fixed up here and now I'm looking down there and I'm like, okay, well, um, I would like to make my hips better because that'll like help me curve out better. And then I think I'm gonna be ready to approach the conversation with myself, which I have not fully completed, which is like, you know, do you wanna do a vaginal plasty? 
And I probably spoke about this in tipping points in the previous video, so I won't get too far into it, but that's, you know, that's, that's a part of the transformation is the, okay, what's next? I think the other part with transformation that's actually surprised me is the internal shift has been less about being trans or transitioning or becoming a woman, but more about becoming the person that I meant to be. And I want to detach that idea from being trans because the person that I'm meant to be is not a trans person. It's not even being a woman. It's, I am a woman and I, yes, I am trans, but I have this larger thing that I want to do and give back to the world. And that's healing, helping you, um, being a trans life coach, and helping all of y'all transition through your experiences and really like growing from there. Like I'd love to help out cis people understand themselves better and work through the challenges they're working through and help find their own personal meaning. So this is something that I've felt, but I haven't stepped into until I started really this YouTube series, Tea Time, and you know, you're watching this, this channel and I've only been doing this channel for about five months, I think, maybe six. And so, for me, this has been a reckoning of, it's time to step into your power, Ashley. Have you had this reckoning yet for yourself? Where are you being pulled when it comes to stepping in your power? Do you acknowledge that you have a power? Do you know where to step into that? And how are you encouraging yourself to step into that? Now, I know that sounds like a really big thing to do if you're not in your power because you go, oh my God, this is like really scary and I don't know if I can do it and maybe I'm wrong and all of these kind of like self-doubt narratives that we're pulling out. Have you heard any of those to yourself? Have you told any of yourself any of those ones? <laughs> I know I do. Yep, still do it too. And um, so I had, a, I had a nightmare the other day where a demon entered my dream and um, you know, it was brutal. It was a brutal dream where there was like stabbing and people dying and murder and concealment and intrigue and all of these things that were really nasty and ugly, really. And uh, I woke up and said to myself, you know, there's this shaman side, there's this spiritual healer side to me that exists and we connect through the camera. Um, my energy is transmitting to you um, whether or not you know it or not, um, but I am transmitting and, and giving healing energy through this. And uh, I haven't really been super focused on developing it and progressing it. It's sort of like um, your transition when you find your happy place to be. You say, okay, like, am I gonna be more feminine or am I gonna be more masculine? Where am I gonna be on this spectrum? Oh, like this is the most comfortable place for me to exist. So I'm gonna kind of, make this my center. And healing has been sort of a little off my, like a little off to my center. So it's there, but it's sort of like this thing that we dance around. These videos, I mean, there's some spiritual videos that I publish. I've got some spiritual stuff, but I, I so before I made this video, I meditated very shortly. I created a visualization. I instilled within the fabric of reality, this intent to heal and connect with you. And now I'm broadcasting that. And that's a different process than just turning on the camera and recording it. There's a, more energetic connections there. And I wanna do that more. And I don't wanna do that just through speaking to your mind. I wanna do that by speaking to your heart and uh, doing that in person too, like doing in-person healings but I haven't developed that as much. So that's something that I'm really interested in stepping into. And probably the biggest surprise is stepping into being more of, of me, being more of the leader, developer, coach, supporter of you and all the kinds of people that you are. So that's kind of been the biggest transformation is saying, now that I've got this burden out of the way, I can focus on other things and I can focus on what the big thing is to do. So if there's anything to kind of take away from that, I think it's really just when you have a goal and you're able to achieve it, 
it really helps you move on to the next thing. And whatever that next thing is, um, you may not see it coming until you're able to stand on that, that, uh, that proverbial mountain and say, I just climbed this mountain, where do I go next? I remember when I used to work um, for my own job, like I had, I had, I had a design business and um, I could see my income as far as two, two to three months out. Other than that, I didn't know where the money was coming. We would just figure it out. And so my plan for living and life was, I planned around three to six months out. As soon as I got a full-time job, I started to be able to plan much longer periods of time because I had predictable income. Oh, like I'm making money for a full year. I can make money for multiple years and continue to do this. I can start to plan, you know, to, to save up for surgery or to invest or other things. Where are you on your spectrum of planning and thinking ahead? And I don't want to like make this a stressful thought because, you know, sometimes you can be like, well, I'm not thinking ahead enough. Honestly, wherever you are is where you're supposed to be right now. And depending on how you approach it, there'll be different outcomes. I always encourage a growth mindset, you know, one where you, you can spin it to yourself in a positive way where you can find something that you can gain, some kind of treasure. That's the best way of approaching it, in my opinion, because the only other option if you're faced with difficulty and to just be like, I'm just gonna accept that the world is terrible and difficult and hard on me, and that I'm not gonna gain anything from this, it just, it makes life harder, to be honest. We've gone on a lot of topics, and like I said, this was just like, we're gonna talk about anything day. <laughs> but let me know how it goes. Let me know how, how it's been for you, and, um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on whatever we're talking about today. Love you, sending big hugs, and um, yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be back in Berlin very soon. Bye.